yes. Uh, uh, yeah, if possible, I uh, would like to wait for a few minutes, uh, not more than five minutes. Uh, yeah, uh, normally we have about five, six students these days. If possible, if not, uh, uh, we we can start. Oh, Randy, please feel free. Uh, good time to to begin. So we'll start uh, simply by paying Recording homage in progress. to the Buddha. Namotasa Bhagavato Arato Samma Sambuddhasa Namotasa Bhagavato Arato Samma Sambuddhasa Namotasa Bhagavato Arato Samma Sambuddhasa Udam Dhammam Sangam Saranam Gachami Tutiampi Pudam Dhammam Sangam Saranam Gachami Tatiampi Pudam Dhammam Sangam Saranam Gachami Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. So we start our meeting uh, today, this lecture with what is most important, and that is uh, doing good deeds. One of the most direct and one of the most skillful ways that we can uh, practice doing good deeds and to do good deeds continuously in any situation and at any time is with the practice of meditation, bhavana. So there are many meditation methods out there, many complicated ideas and debates about uh, which meditation method is the best, which one is most skillful, uh, which one leads us to enlightenment the fastest. Uh, but none of this is really important. What is important is simply to practice mindfulness and detachment at this moment and at any moment. To put down, to let go uh, our idea about a self and other. To put down and let go our idea about friend or foe good or bad, uh, and simply to do good. So we can start our meditation practice by first finding a comfortable, stable position for the body. We find a place to sit that is uh, suitable and convenient, simple and stable. We sit in a way where our shoulders are back, our head is upright, our spine is straight, and our stomach and chest are open. And we sit in a way where we don't have to try and fight or put forth much effort to hold ourselves up. So we let the chair or the cushion or the meditation position to be what holds us in a place of stability. So at this moment, finding that meditation position for your body. Our meditation position is very much like a flat surface on which we set a cup down. In meditation, we are detaching from the outside world, uh, detaching from the environment. The way that we interact with the environment, the way that we get so involved and so attached to the environment is the body. The body touches this, feels that, warmth, cold, comfortable or uncomfortable, 
pleasurable or painful. So just in the same way that we put down a cup with uh, coffee or a cup with a juice that we like, we put down on a flat surface so that we don't have to worry about it, so that we don't have to be concerned about it. Uh, in the same way, our meditation position is this flat surface that we put down the body on. Finding our meditation position is finding the flat, stable surface in which to put the body down. And by extension, to detach from the environment, to detach from the outside world, putting the body down. And as we put the body down, we can begin to notice, begin to become aware that breathing is happening. And we become aware, not like an animal becomes aware of the smell of meat or the smell of milk, but we become aware of the breath also with this quality of wisdom, understanding how precious the breath is, understanding how essential the breath is. If we don't breathe, we die quickly. So the breath, as we begin to notice breathing is happening, uh, there needs to be a lot of curiosity. There needs to be a lot of interest in the breath. Not just our idea of the breath or our idea of focusing on the breath as a meditation method, but really beginning to notice the process of breathing that is happening right now with a lot of curiosity, a lot of interest. Specifically, rather than getting stuck on the idea about breathing, the thoughts about breathing, we can practice to notice the effect of the breath on the body. So you notice, you feel the breath flowing in through your nostrils, going down your neck, down into your chest, your lungs, your stomach. Breathing in deeply, feeling all of the effects, the experiences that go along with breathing in the body. And also, we notice the breath as it flows out. And it's all something that is very worthwhile to be interested in, worthwhile to look at closely with a curiosity. And so putting the body down in our meditation position, we detach from the outside world, and we also detach from the body. We don't try to get rid of it, we don't reject it, but we simply put it down. We're not involved with it. We're not trying to get something out of it or trying to avoid some part of it. But we are just experiencing the breath at this moment. And then we detach from the mind. That is that the only activity, the only practice that our mind is doing or involved in is 
just breathing. We collect our awareness, our attention to this just breathing. Just feeling the breath at this very moment as it flows in and flows out. Any time that a distraction comes up, any time that a confusion comes up or you encounter difficulty, return to just breathing, the body just sitting. the mind just breathing, just being aware. Just following the breath as it flows in and flows out. allowing the body to become more and more still and allowing the mind to collect itself in the practice of just breathing, just being aware of what's happening at this moment. Allow the breath to find a natural rhythm. Don't worry about how you're breathing. Don't try to control breathing. Really, we are uninvolved with any notion of me or mine or self or other or good or bad. Instead, at this moment, recognizing that we are just sitting. The body is just sat down exactly where it is. And the mind is staying with, returning to this practice of just breathing, just being aware. And we lean into that. And we really bring curiosity to that, interest in that. Just sitting, just breathing, just being aware.
So this is the practice to detach, to give up, to let go of our body and mind. This is the practice to experience relying on the meditation method, relying on just breathing, just being aware. And while those complicated thoughts may come up, the inner thinking voice may talk and talk and talk. We practice to be aware of that, but to detach, to be uninvolved with thinking, to be uninvolved with judgment. And we experience what it's like to be interested in and to rely on fully just breathing, just being aware. Relaxing the body and mind, practicing just breathing, just being aware. At this time, you can open your eyes if they are closed. You can take a few moments to move your body from the left to the right, to stretch, to massage your face, and to come back to your normal state of being. So I was invited here today to give a, uh, a short lecture, a short talk on this topic of peacemaking and conflict resolution. And for the uh, people here in Myanmar, in Burma, uh, this is a uh, really essential a really important topic that we uh, need to consider, we need to contemplate, we need to um, care about this topic, that is the development of peace, that is the de-escalation of violence, that is uh, finding stability in the face of complex adversities. So I am not a 
conflict resolution specialist. I am not a political expert in any way. Um, but through my experiences as a Buddhist monk, I have experience to resolve uh, some of the conflict inside of my own mind. And this kind of conflict in the mind is really at the core of whatever violence or instability we are experiencing in the world. As a Buddhist person, as someone who comes from a Buddhist country, uh, surely we will know about the quality of peace, joy, and freedom that can be cultivated and developed inside of our own mind. Not depending on outside situations, not depending on right or wrong, not depending or on who is in charge or who is um, against those who are in charge, this peace of mind. But what we need to understand if we are a Buddhist person and if we live in a Buddhist society, that something that makes Buddhism unique is there are no justifications for hate. There are no justifications for violence. There is no uh, righteous violence. There is no act that can be done with the intent to hurt someone else that is in line with the teachings of the Buddha, the guidance of the Buddha. And so... Why is Myanmar in such a conflict? Why are there so much violences that we experience in Myanmar? Well, the answer is simple. And you know, many international people also want to know about this. They want to understand Myanmar is a Buddhist country. How can there be such uh, difficulties that arrive, uh, such tragedies and um, actions of violence that take place? And it's a simple answer that being a Buddhist does not make someone a Buddha. Saying that you are following the Buddha does not mean that you are living in accordance with the teachings of the Buddha. So what can we do about this situation? Well, one thing that we can do is try to make a bigger violence. We can try to overpower the ad adversary, the opponent, the person who we don't like or the group that we don't like, we can try to hurt them, harm them, kill them, make their situation to be more and more in suffering, more and more in anxiety, more and more in instability. We can do this. As human beings, we have our Buddha nature. That means that we have our ability to become enlightened. This is what the Buddha represents. If you go to the temple, if you go to see the monks and you see the big Buddha, why is the big Buddha in the middle of the temple? Why is the big Buddha at the heart of all Buddhist temples? Why not some monk who is sitting up there? Well, it's very simple. The Buddha is representing our ability to become enlightened. The human ability to become enlightened. The human ability to experience complete peace. The complete ending of suffering. Nibbana. Enlightenment. So we have this great capacity to become enlightened. To experience great peace but we also have the capacity to do a lot of harm, to be very unskillful, to be just like the most advanced animals, just like to be the most advanced and developed anger, just like to be the most advanced and developed negative thinking. And you don't need to be in a modern country to express this most advanced anger, this most advanced hatred, this most advanced negative thinking, this most advanced greediness. You don't need to be in a 
first world, most developed Western country to practice this most developed um, poison of mind. Just in the same way that you don't need to be in America to become enlightened. You don't need to be in America to, uh, to develop great states of peace and wisdom that can benefit your society and your community, and especially your own life. So in this way, we have such a great responsibility, not in solving the outside problem, but in solving the inside problem. And if we get involved in solving this inside problem, uh, not through the intellect, not through thinking, not through trying to change our situation, but instead through doing good deeds, practicing mindfulness and detachment, sila, samadhi, panya, If we can do this, we can hold a new kind of election in Myanmar. We can hold a new kind of election in our uh, communities, in our societies, whether they be uh, from Ashan state or uh, some other Rohingya state, some other place. And this is a Dhamma election. This is an election of the Dhamma, and we place our votes moment by moment. We place our votes continuously, either to do good deeds or to do bad deeds, either to focus on uh, actions that come from an intention to help or actions that come from an intention to hurt, to harm, to cause suffering. The more that we vote in our own mind, and our own mind is also extending outward, the more that we vote in our own mind to do actions, doing actions from this place of selfishness, desire for ourselves, or a wish for someone else to have a suffering or a harm, the more unstable our movements will be, our internal movements and external movements. There is a reason that the Buddha Sasana, there is a reason that the Buddhist Sangha, the monks and nuns, have been able to stay together, stay organized, stay, stay inside of this same system, whether it's in China or Thailand or Myanmar or Laos or Cambodia or Sri Lanka, Vietnam, all over the world. Somehow the monk have been able to stay together, organized, systematic, many close, close relationship, even to cooperate with the government, to cooperate with other parties that may be afraid of the monks or may want to destroy the monks. The reason that this is possible is because the job of a monk and the job of the Buddhist Sangha is to constantly be involved in the, this Dhamma election in this choice to do good deeds, in this choice to follow the precepts in this choice to practice a dana. When we think about dana in Buddhism, we maybe we're thinking about, oh, it's only the lay people, right? It is the normal people, the normal human beings who are donating to the monk and nun, giving them food, giving them money, giving them robe and bowl. But in fact, this kind of dana is enabling and supporting a higher practice of dana. This is the practice of mindfulness and detachment. This is the practice of giving up our body and mind. This is the practice of practicing meditation. We can say this is just like the highest good deed, the highest generosity, to give up desire actions of the body and mind and to practice meditation moment by moment, breath by breath. So what are we to do in this situation? instability in Myanmar, many violence, many suffering, many anger, many greed, many negative thinking? Well, it's a simple answer. We have to do good deeds more and more. We have to be more and more generous. We have to recognize systematically and clearly about when anger arises, when greediness arises, when negative thinking arises. 
we need to allow this arising of poison to inspire us to do good deeds, to be generous, to practice mindfulness and detachment. Otherwise, our inside movement, our inside organization will be unstable. It will easy to fall apart. We will easy to fall into depression, anxiety, confusion, fear, complicated thinking. And in the same way, our outside organizations will also be shallow. They will be limited. Because we may be voting for certain people outside, but in our Dhamma election, in our election of skillfulness and goodness and mindfulness and and detachment, we are voting for our desire. We are voting for our greed. We are voting for our negative thinking. So both the inside and the outside movements will be uh, weak, shallow, unsupported, unsustainable, not cohesive, not organized. So whatever our end goal is, whatever kind of world we want to find ourselves in, in Myanmar or in America, whatever it might be, we have to get involved in this Dhamma election that is happening each and every moment. And this Dhamma election is to not vote for greed, anger, delusion, moha, dosa, loba. We couldn't to vote for that anymore. We couldn't to support that anymore. And this is really how we get involved in the peacemaking process. It starts with our own body and mind. It starts with our own heart. Once we can start to peacify, once we can start to open our heart and deepen our mind, we have an ability to connect with other people in the same way. We have ability to organize with other people, not just in a reactionary way, not just reacting to something, and especially not just trying to cause harm or to try to cause suffering in a situation, but when we can participate in the Dhamma election and vote for the good rather than the bad, we have an opportunity to get involved in creative, sustainable, cohesive organization. Contemplative, creative actions that are not based in harming other people, they're not based in setting off bombs, they're not based in our own moha greed, anger, delusion. But instead, they are based in our dana, our sila, our bhavana, which is far more powerful, far more skillful. And in this way, we might not solve the problems of the world, but we can start to get involved in solving the problems of our own mind. This can naturally extend to solving the problems in our local community through the power of doing good deeds. And from there, who knows what can happen? A whole nation can be involved in a Dhamma election, participating in this way. If your intention is coming from anger, if your intentional action is coming from a greediness, I need everything to go my way. I need it to be just like this. I need this to change that way according to me. If your action is coming from this feeling, this intention of strong, complicated, negative thinking, you can be sure you are voting for the wrong person in the Dhamma election. You can be sure you are doing bad deeds instead of good deeds. So whatever our actions may be in this peacemaking process, starting from our own body and mind, we have to prioritize goodness. We have to prioritize dana. We have to prioritize sila. We have to prioritize samadhi. We need to practice our meditation at this time. And in this way, somehow uh, peace will develop. We just need to participate more and more in doing good deeds inside from where we are right now. And for sure, it will extend outwardly. But at the moment, especially when we are feeling the anger, the greed, the strong negative thinking, the answer to the problem is to detach. 
to refresh and restart, to come back to the breath, the body, the heart at this moment, and to practice doing good deeds more and more. In this way, the Dhamma election will have a clear result, and that will be the result of peace in Myanmar. So at this time, uh, if anyone would like to ask a question, um, that's good, and I will be happy to try and answer. Yeah, thank you, Bandy. Uh, I uh, I now learn from you how to answer because uh, in 2019 at a American Public Health Association conference, uh, during my presentation, uh, after my presentation, one professor asked me why there are conflicts in Buddhist uh, majority country like Myanmar. So at the time, uh, my presentation is on conflict affected public health, public health issues. And also in our panel, other, uh, other, uh, other speaker, they, uh, they present about uh, conflicts uh, in Rakhine State. Uh, they went to Bangladesh side and they interviewed uh, Rohingya and the their paper is on based on their interview result. So that panel is about uh, Burma, Myanmar. And so the, the audience, one of the audience, uh, the, his professor, he asked me that question. So at the time I was, uh, I paused for several seconds and then I answer, yeah, as, uh, as a Burmese, I quite often encounter this question. Um, at that time, I just give the answer, but uh, I answer that uh, I, I, because of that uh, conflicts in uh, Rakhine State, um, based on that, I answer, um, yes, uh, some Burmese or most Burmese uh, at the time in, in Burma, we uh, they have a uh, Islamophobia and some even the religious leaders or authorities they give reason I mean they give example like Afghanistan Indonesia which were Buddhist country before and now they they are number they became non-Buddhist country and they have those constant and worries and because of those this phobia so I give that answer at the time but now I I learn a meaningful answer from you that we don't, although we are Buddhists, uh, we don't practice uh, Buddhism uh, properly. Thank you. This is really one of the unique aspects of Buddhism is that there is no violence that is ascribed to the Buddha. There is no violence that the Buddha endorses. Even the mindset, even the feeling, the quality of mind to wish harm to someone else is outlawed by the Buddha. It is immediately seen as antithetical to developing on the path. This ill will, this wish for someone else to have a harm or a difficulty, a pain. Um, so it's... It's very clear that just because someone is a Buddhist does not mean they are a Buddha, meaning they are awakened or enlightened or have a, a deep understanding, a deep experience, the same with a monk. And of course, Myanmar people will know that, but a lot of times the international people, they, they don't, when they think about a monk, they think they are living in the forest all the time meditating and they don't speak, right? But just because someone is a monk, also does not mean that they are clearly representing the teaching of Buddha or that they have a uh, 
uh, an understanding that is correct according to the Buddha's teaching. So we have to use our wisdom and our goodness to try our best to help in this uh, complicated situation. Yeah, thank you, Bandi. Yeah. Sometimes I feel like uh, we Burmese Buddhists, uh, we are like, uh, uh, we, we are very enthused and we are serious to conserve or to guard the religion. Uh, I mean, the majority, the major religion, that's Buddhism. Uh, Buddhist people focus on that rather than uh, practice. Even myself, I analyze. I I'm just a traditional Buddhism. I have to, uh, I have to walk uh, to practice uh, what Buddha taught us properly and regularly. So I I see my ourselves as we are like a god or guardian or rather than practitioner. Yeah, you know this uh, this mindset is as you can see in Myanmar, is not necessarily uh, protecting Buddhism, but in fact it can put uh, the, Buddha, the Buddha's teachings in harm's way, and in fact can disgrace the Buddha on a national stage. And it's a sensitive topic, but, you know, we can say um, that we really need to be careful about any kind of promoting of hatred, any kind of promoting of ill will, and especially from the from the Buddhist platform to encourage any kind of negativity towards a person or people or judgment towards a person or peoples, this is not uh, this is not coming from wisdom. This is coming from anger, greed, and delusion. So if you speak from poison, you will poison. Uh, you will poison those who hear it. You will poison Buddhism. Protecting Buddhism means that we are practicing meditation. Protecting Buddhism means that we are uh, doing good deeds, that we are practicing mindfulness and detachment, that we are uh, involved in dana and following the precepts. Uh, not to kill, not to steal, not to speak harshly, not to lie. Uh, this is what it really means to protect Buddhism. Yeah, I also realized that although we say uh, that some some people they use they even use violent ways if necessary and in the name of protecting the religion, but uh, I. I now realize that uh, I mean staying in the international state, uh, meeting with the international communities, I see oh we are like the black sheep of the Buddhist countries among Buddhist countries. Myanmar is like uh, yeah uh, I mean we destroy the image of Buddhism. The people ask well, quite often ask me. I as far as I know for the past. Almost 3,000 years since the time of the Buddha, there has not been a single mark on his robe. And when uh, the situation of Rohingya and Myanmar, uh, even even the military, uh, the military, uh, the way of governing of the military up until the present day, um, there were some. Uh, uprising or some attempt at a revolution. You know, there are some political things that happen in Myanmar, and it is a Buddhist country, very strange and uh, confusing for many people, especially for an outsider or a foreigner's point of view. But up until the uh, Rohingya crisis, there had never been something about Buddhism or Buddhist monks to be participating in violence and genocide and uh, preaching hate and preaching violence. There, uh, from what I know, there has never been a mark like this on Buddhism until, until that time uh, of Ashinwiratu. So um, 
you know, it was on Time magazine, and uh, we should really do our best to protect uh, Buddhism through our good deeds, through our mindfulness and detachment, and not through blaming certain kind of people or uh, wishing that they have a, a harm or a suffering or try to get them out or hurt them. This is not according to the Buddha teaching. So does anyone have a question? Yet a son, you'd like to ask something? Uh, yes. Uh, firstly, thank you so much. And uh, I enjoy uh, this uh, in this uh, section because of the Amakinamiya. So thank you so much. And I have on my personal, my own personal questions, which is that. So I'm just trying to practice the Buddha teachings, like just like a Buddhism. Uh, very few years ago, uh, when I realized like, that what is the, the the main and the essence of Buddhism is, but. <laughs> In my case, uh, sometimes I heard or I faced someone is just attacking me <laughs> and someone is just talking about my gossip and very frequently. So I'm just patient. I'm patient one or two, up to three times. But so when I just heard a lot of times and when I uh, have that kind of suffering of, uh, like harm, so like a, a mental heart, at that time, how can I tolerate like a Buddhism? <laughs> so please, could you please just uh, give me an example of how to resolve that kind of problems like me? Okay. So we get too involved in other people we have conversations with them that are unskillful and inappropriate and unnecessary. And this is to be more aware of a right speech. You need to be careful about how you speak. And through your experiences of making mistakes in your speech and then bringing up the other side of people's mistake, uh, you can learn more and more to detach from speaking in certain ways and speaking to certain people. And it's not so much important what we think or what we believe or what we even uh, what we say, but it's our intention behind it. And it's our ability to detach from what we think. It's our ability to detach from what we say. It's our ability to give up our relationship with that other person. Maybe you're still talking to them, you're still interacting with them, but it's not about you or them. It's not about me and mine or I and other. It's just about you are trying to help them alleviate their suffering. You are trying to help take care of their situation. That's not about self and other. It's not about right and wrong. You just have an intention to help those people. And if you know that they hold on very strongly to a certain idea and a certain feeling, then you try to help them to not take that so seriously. But debating with them or trying to convince other people of a certain thing, uh, this is just politics. And it's not, uh, it's not suitable to give much attention to that. Thank you, Benji. Thank you so much. What other people do and think is not so important. It's what you do and think that is important. But if you are thinking that what other people are doing and thinking is important, then you will get into a very complicated and confused state of mind. So the first step is to detach from this idea that uh, you need to focus on what other people are thinking and saying. You need to focus on your own mind. And the more that you can do that, the less you will be 
involved in these unskillful interactions with uh, people who need your help. Okay. Okay, so I see Zinmar Tient says, How can we forgive people who is constantly doing bad things to others? Another one is that, is it possible to build peace only from one side? Well, we, we don't need to forgive, we need to detach. So that is to be more aware of the situation that you are in right now. Not your belief, not your story, not your uh, idea about that situation, but not even to forgive them, but no self and no other, no me and no them, just to detach, to let go of that whole situation and to be mindful of your breath, of what's happening right now. And that is to forgive those people. Another one is that uh, there is only one way to build peace, and that is from our side. Through making peace on our side, we can share peace with the outside. Um, that's all you can do, because we cannot control the world. It's just like we get the news, we see on the news channel, we hear on the radio, there is a meteor, there is an asteroid coming to Earth. You are not going to be, you know, writing a comment, asking a question, uh, how, can we, how can we make peace? with this, this meteor, with this asteroid. So don't focus on the other side. There is only one side, and that is the side of doing good deeds, practicing mindfulness, practicing detachment continuously, especially doing good deeds uh, with your own body and mind to offer to share for those people who are around you. Um, in this way, we having more and more peace in our own life, and we can share, we can offer that to more and more people. We can instruct them, support them to have peace. And then, just like this, more and more people are doing good deeds. More and more people are practicing detachment to forgive those uh, unskillful people. And then we can come together and, uh, you know, we, we build up this side of peace to be very strong, very deep. And then we see what happens, you know, it's uh, not in our control. The other side is not in our control. It's only this side that we need to focus on. And if you want to know about or learn about the other side, that's okay. But if you give too much attention to that, you're just going to be focusing on something that you can't control. And it's better you spend that time to be doing good deeds and establishing peace with your own greed, anger, and delusion. If you get this answer from someone who is on the other side, you are very upset, right? You are angry. How dare they say that, right? But actually, this is the truth. And it's the truth because we cannot control the world. We cannot control a meteor coming towards us. We cannot control the situation in Myanmar or the United States. It doesn't matter how many people we have or guns we have or anything that we have, because this is just trying to control the created truth, and you cannot control it. The only thing that you can control is knowing about the truth. That is impermanence. That is, Myanmar will disappear. Even Buddhism will disappear. This is known, and we say there will be another Buddha. There will be another being, another human who become enlightened on their own, like our precious Shakyamuni Buddha. So focus to build peace on your side, and that is the best thing you can do, for sure. Okay, 
You're welcome. Uh, do you have question, Nui? Nui? I thought uh, you raised your hand before. Okay, so it looked like we we take all the questions. Um, so I want to thank everyone for for being here, for listening and participating. I hope this was uh, helpful and supportive for you in your um, practices as educators and uh, bodhisattvas, people working for the benefit of. Uh, your own body and mind, the body and mind of the people around you, and also working for the ending of suffering of your village, your country, your society. I encourage you to participate more and more in your own Dhamma election, making the choice to do good deeds, making the choice to recognize when you are focusing on or acting from a place of anger or greediness or negative thinking, and to give that up. Do less and less those unskillful deeds. Do more and more uh, good deeds. And in this way, uh, we will be successful in our Dhamma election. Okay? If if you if possible, if you have time, can I ask you one more question? Go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I am. Uh, uh, I I can do uh, as you advise uh, to be peaceful. I mean, uh, I'm I am okay, but I'm not sure whether I'm not inside Myanmar, inside Burma. I am isolated. I mean, although mentally I interact the situations of my country, but physically I am quite safe here. I'm not inside Myanmar. So some people, uh, they said, oh, we have to use arm to arm uh, to, to disable the authoritative regime to remove the regime. So, and they said there's a justice. So at the time, I don't know what to say. Uh, personally, I I don't want to vi use violent way because I dare not sacrifice. Uh, and also I don't, I don't want to ask my child to sacrifice. That's why with empathy, I don't want to ask other people to sacrifice their life and use arms or violent way to uh, in this revolution. But uh, some people said there's justice, we have to do, we have to use this way, violent way to remove that authoritative regime. So at the time, I don't know what to say. In faith, I mean, in religion, I embrace, but in the, the human war or, I mean, human cases, I don't know. Uh, what to say and how to accept or how, how to reply then. Could you please advise? It's really quite simple. Uh, we have to remember this Dhamma election. We need to remember karma, gamma. We need to remember what is a good deed, what is a bad deed. If we have the intention to harm someone, we will harm ourselves. If we have the intention to help someone, we will help ourselves. We shouldn't get too complicated about our intention. Our intention should be clear to bring benefit to a situation and to do that through 
generosity, to do that through doing our best to help in a sustainable, cohesive, practical way. The practical aspect is really important. The Buddhist path is all about being practical. And if you have, you know, someone who is outside of Myanmar telling teenagers to fight against one of the largest militaries in the world, uh, you can be sure that this is not a practical person and that this is a dangerous person. So uh, I think what you can do is try to emphasize the what you said, but to emphasize it more strongly. Um, you are not in Myanmar. You are not willing to sacrifice your life. You are not, or rather, you are not sacrificing your life. You are not sacrificing your children's lives. So it's easy to say this, but you are not matching it by doing. So why do you keep saying this? Why do you keep putting the lives of teenagers and children in Myanmar to be killed, to be murdered, uh, to experience uh, this great, great suffering when you yourself are not there, not participating, and unwilling to be there? But don't focus too much on that because people will say, oh, I am willing to be there. You know, I want to be there. I just can't, right? So try to emphasize the effect of those words, which are young people putting on bulletproof vest and uh, going into the jungle with uh, rifles and getting themselves killed. And... Uh, causing more and more suffering in, in Myanmar. You know, the as a monk, it's best to, to speak only according to Dhamma, but I am a young monk. I am not so wise. I am not so experienced. Hopefully, can get much more wise, much more experience. But the practical answer is that that Myanmar military is one of the largest in the world. They are well supported by China. The other militaries in Myanmar are not involved in this revolution. They are not participating. So you have a small group, a very, very small group of young people who have made the decision to go into the forest and go into certain places and gather together. Sometimes you have 500 people and five guns. So this is not Ukraine. This is not uh, something like that. There is no one coming to help uh, the teenagers in Myanmar who are living in the forest to fight against uh, this military regime. So we need to be focused on doing good deeds. We need to be focused on taking care of the elderly people, taking care of the sick people. We need to be focused on uh, finding peace in Myanmar. People want to be excited. People want to be special. People want to have to be the president of Myanmar outside of Myanmar. They want to say a lot of loud things and make a lot of noise so that they will get a lot of donations and a lot of support and people will look up to them. But what is the real result of how they are speaking? You know, what is the real wisdom that they are expressing? It might not be very much. And this is why we should focus to be practical in what we say, what we do. And to be practical as a Buddhist is to be focused on doing good deeds, not to get the effect. So someone will be pushing, do this, do this, do this, and you will get some effect. We will get this effect. If you do this, do this, we will get this effect. You can be sure that this is just like a car salesman. This is like someone selling snake oil. Do this, do this, do this, you'll get this effect. No. You have to do good deeds, and sure, there will be a good result. There will be a good effect. This is the law of karma. But we need to detach from the effects. We need to focus on doing good deeds more and more. We don't need to buy something. We need to practice doing good. And what Myanmar, what Myanmar needs right now is good deeds more and more, generosity more and more, meditation and following the precepts more and more. That's what Myanmar needs right now. 
And um, that isn't to be locked in a cage. That is to have a creative situation where me and Mark can grow and develop in many new and different ways. But forming terrorist organi- terrorist cells is is not going to work out for anyone. And we shouldn't encourage violence, even if the other side the other side doing bad things does not change the fact that if we do bad things, we will have bad experiences. If we go run out with a gun, we will be the ones who get shot. We will get back what we give, right? We will get back what we do. So we should focus on doing good deeds and generosity more and more and uh, try to calm those people down and try to make it clear the the effect that they can have, the real effect that they can have on uh, these people, these kids, these children who don't know much of anything. They don't know better. They are just upset. Try to emphasize the effect that it can have. And also, what is the outcome? What is the realistic practical outcome? What is the realistic possibility of what could happen? And uh, in this situation, it's pretty clear that, you know, we, uh, we have to do our best to be generous, to take care of Myanmar, to do more and more good deeds, and to bring peace to Myanmar through doing good deeds, not through violence, not through fighting. And if we are on the right side, we need to keep quiet and we need to do it. And if we make a mistake, we need to speak out and say, I made a mistake. We need to find peace, not to create war. So that is what I can share with you. I hope that it will help you in those situations. And we try to make friend. We try to make friend with anyone. We don't need to make an enemy. Uh, We need to make, um, we need to try and take care of those people who we feel easy for them to be our enemy. We try to communicate with them, not to be right, but to to share our, uh, our care. With them. Yeah, thank you very much, Gandhi. Yeah, yeah, I have a uh, work experience uh, during the previous military regime. At the time, I worked for conflict affected communities with international organizations. So at the time, I recall that we have to be patient and we had to be strategic and we have to be communicative with uh, a then military regime to achieve our goals, our, uh, our, uh, our aims, uh, projects for uh, our beneficiary communities. Yeah. Through so cooperation, I, we yeah. all achieve success. Through competition, yeah. we will all fail. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bud. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if possible, I would like to know. Uh, I obs- I saw that you provide you give a uh, daily uh the mar practice and talk uh at Zoom. If you don't, if possible, uh, we I would like to we would like to have that uh, information uh, so that we can join. I am teaching all the time, every day, for the Western people for the English-speaking people. And I also have a Vietnamese group that I am teaching to. So this is every day, very common, very regular. So I can share on my YouTube channel, or you can add me on uh, Facebook, and you can find out about it uh, there. Yeah, thank you, Bandi. Yeah, I will share your Facebook uh, ad link with my students yeah who are love yeah thank you thank you bandi okay yeah. yeah. could you please share uh seattle profile like youtube channels because i would like to subscribe and i would like to just uh like and follow for the facebook page thank you yeah. Siamo. yes Siamo, i will definitely do so thank you so let's uh, let's finish with uh, some chanting, 
and then we will end our meeting together and I put the, the link in the chat box, okay? So we can all bring our hands together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambu Dasa Satu 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 Okay, thank you so much for having me. Hope you all enjoy, and uh, if you do like to join for some group meditation or to reach out to me, you are very welcome. Okay. Thank you very much, Bandy. Sukiyotu.